because sometimes a couple of hours just isn't enough. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 British movies that should have their own TV series. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Following the success of Brit flick films like Snatch switching from big to small screen, it got us thinking which other British movies could be a hit if they were converted into a TV show. 30,000 views. This thing's breaking the internet. For this list, we're counting down the films that most stand out as exciting candidates. At that time, we stayed up all night drinking apple schnapps and playing Tekken 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when was that? That was five years ago. Number 10, Scum. Name and number. Angel, sir. Number. <clears throat> Can't remember, sir. Can't remember your number, lad. That's all you are, a number. Crime drama Scum could just be the telly adaptation that you've been craving but never knew it. Any more of this and you're in trouble. Real trouble. Understand? Yes, sir. While the edgy, gritty drama is set in a violent and hostile English postal, with an original cast headed up by a then up and coming Ray Winston, a TV version of this particular story could be the British answer to something like Prison Break. <laughs> Except the only things breaking if Scum was ever serialised would be the bones of every main character, if it's anywhere near as brutal as the movie. That bench, you bastard! Oh. I'm the daddy now. Next time I'll f***ing kill ya! Number 9, Slumdog Millionaire. Who invented the revolver? An ultimately feel-good underdog story that you never really want to end, an extended Slumdog Millionaire series would allow you to enjoy it for that much longer. You've just won 16,000 rupees! Well done, my friend! The show would retell the events from the film itself, with the plucky protagonist appearing on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and answering each question with help of personal and often painful flashbacks. I can't take that risk, Maman. Sorry. But in a serial format, each episode could cover one question only, allowing for a more in-depth backstory. Failing that, the show could even focus on a new character with their own eventful past. I have to tell you... The right answer! Number 8, Paddington. It's just one night until we can find the right people to look after him. There you are. <laughs> because who doesn't want to spend more time with this lovable little rascal? He's from deepest, darkest Peru, and he loves marmalade. What more do you want? Adding time? Oh, sorry. I like it. The film series with Ben Whishaw, Hugh Bonneville, and Sally Hawkins has far exceeded expectations, being adored by young and old alike. And yes, the character does already have a small screen history, fronting various animated shows over the years, starting way back in the mid-70s. I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. I came all the way in a lifeboat and I ate marmalade. Bears like marmalade. So, wouldn't the live action take mesh just as well into an episodic format? Of course it would. Got my eye on you, bear! Oh, sorry. Number seven, Kiddlehood. You're ugly, you're a shit f and you're with me like six form top boy. If it weren't for me, who would even look at you? Eventually spawning a celebrated trilogy, Kiddlehood is another stylish, gritty drama following the lives of West London teenagers over the course of a single day. Now get out. And day is the key word, because this could easily be stretched out across several seasons of a TV series if it observed the central characters over a longer period of time, perhaps weeks, months or years. You didn't get to cut me, did you, bitch? While the films feature large time jumps between each instalment, a series could flesh out the gaps in between, showing us what we missed or examining the lives of a completely new set of London youngsters. I'm gonna shove this bat so far up your pussy. Oh, shit. Number six, In Bruges. There's never been a classic movie made in Bruges until now. Of course there hasn't, it's a shithole. Bruges is my hometown, right? Well, it's still a shithole. To be fair, this black comedy is that good, you might feel as if you've watched the whole series. What with the number of times you can end up enjoying repeated viewings of it. I like it here. Centered on two hitmen hiding out in the titular high culture city, there's a lot more to their assignment than what first meets the eye. You said he was a lollipop man. He was a lollipop man. 
What's a lollipop man doing on fucking karate? In TV format, the story could follow a similar concept, with a young assassin joined by an older, more experienced chap, but maybe hiding out in a different European location. In Brussels, in Berlin, in Bratislava, take your pick. You heed the Canadian. Huh? You heed the Canadian. I heat the Canadian. I don't know what you're talking about. Number five, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, time, it's an illusion. Lunchtime, doubly so. Our hypothetical hoo-ha wouldn't be the first Hitchhiker's Guide TV series. That honor goes to the BBC Two show way back in 1981. What the hell's that? Well, if we're lucky, it's a Vogon guard come to throw us into space. And if we're unlucky, the Vogon captain might want to read us some of his poetry first. But after the ultra enjoyable 2005 big screen adaptation, there are clearly still stories to be told with Arthur Dent, his ever present dressing gown, and his myriad of alien and robot friends. Okay, computer, keep going, take a stand. I'd be happy to. Douglas Adams' comic Cosmic Saga still resonates with modern audiences, and what better time than now for a contemporary retelling? with recent revivals for Star Trek and Lost in Space proving that there's still an appetite for sci-fi on the regular. It's, um, it's, it's all there. You know, it, it all works. Welcome home. Number four, train spotting. This should present no significant problems. <laughs> Let's just say this series could quickly become quite addictive. Thank you, Your Honor. With God's help, I'll conquer this terrible affliction. The cult classic tale of a heroin addict trying to escape his old life of drug binges and petty crime in Edinburgh to start afresh in London, only to get roped back in again, feels a perfect fit for television. Oh, I for all the good they've done me, I might as well have stuck them up my ass. And if it keeps the sorry, sleazy, and morbidly hilarious tone of the original movie, it could be the ideal fix for anyone missing the glory days of Shameless. Perhaps a new cast to take the lead with cameos from the original lineup. As long as Spud features somewhere, we're happy. And our horses will not be tied. And I wonder if we'll remember. Number three, Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> I don't know about that. Cockasidal maniac. <laughs> Who wouldn't be clamoring like the undead to a fresh brain for this? Zombies have proven to be a huge success on television, with The Walking Dead being a ratings juggernaut, and the undead White Walkers on Game of Thrones becoming a major part of its popularity. What do both those awesome shows still lack, though? First class comedy. Are you alright? And that's exactly what Shaun of the Dead provides, and what a series adaptation could bring too. Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, it's not too much to ask, is it? What's the matter, David? I've never taken a shortcut before. Number two, The Football Factory. He's only fallen asleep, Tamika. Same here, Sean. Little f***ers. Football is a typically weekly game, with ardent fans travelling to home matches one week and off to other cities for away fixtures the next. I'm going to find a telly to watch it. Don't worry about that, mate. There'll be plenty of tellies where we're going. So, why not turn this football flick into a weekly show too, and see what the firm gets up to every Saturday? Listen, we'll get the beer safe, then we'll outflank them, yeah? It would have to be on way past the watershed, mind you, and definitely not just as a follow-up to Match of the Day, because any series adaptation of this hooligan story would get very violent very quickly. <laughs> Number one, Kingsman The Secret Service. Do you know what that means? Then let me teach you a lesson. One of the best things to come out of the bombastic, action-packed Kingsman series is Colin Firth's gentleman spy character, Harry Hart. Death couldn't even hold him back. Exit. Hello, Harry. So it's safe to say there's a want and need to see more of the espionage mentor. Sorry about that. Needed to let off a little steam. But to make things even more interesting, a proposed series could centre on his origin story, tracking Hart from when he was just a rookie himself and charting his rise up the Kingsman ranks. Man as maketh man, man maketh series, everybody's hooked. Easy. Thank you. Don't mention it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.